good afternoon everyone welcome to vmware it session today we are going to see how vmware it is driving application modernization with vmware tanzu so let's begin so this is a standard disclaimer i want you to quickly look at it and move to next slide so this is high level agenda for today's session uh, we will have uh, the speaker's introduction we will look at it it landscape we will uh, look into the details of uh, monolithic and microservices how we have move, moved our journey right then we look at the modern application platforms we will look at the uh, devsecops as well as uh, the tools that we use in devsecops or devops and last but not least we will look at the outcomes of uh, this journey okay so introduction arjun you want to quickly introduce yourself sure hello folks uh, my name is uh, arjun basu uh, i'm an it director looking after the saas commerce platform at vmware uh, which uh, powers our growing portfolio of uh, saas products uh, my interests are always finding ways of uh, pushing the boundaries for enterprise agility and of course uh, increasing my 10k pace okay hey, thank you thanks arjun so uh, team my name is mukund i am part of vmware it uh, close to 9 uh, years of experience in vmware it and before that i was in uh, oracle and other companies close to 24 years of total experience and uh, mainly managing the enterprise applications platforms and databases throughout my uh, career uh, mainly on this uh, private cloud as well as uh, the public cloud and hybrid clouds so this is a quick introduction introduction about myself let's move on to the next slide okay so uh, it is the high level it landscape right uh, again i don't want to go through all the details of all the numbers here but uh, as you can see from the numbers it is like an multinational it shop wherein we have presence into uh, uh, you can say uh, all the you can say regions in the world uh, when it comes to you can say uh, number of data centers we have 24 but we have uh, two data center which are heavily used for production workloads uh and then when it comes to number of vms which we create and destroy on a weekly basis is almost like 1.6 million uh when it comes to containers we create and destroy almost like 2.2 million containers and uh, uh when it comes to uh, implementation of uh, the nsx advanced load balancer we have almost like 167 uh, applications as of now counting uh, and we have aggressive target to complete uh, the uh, migration of all the applications into rv load balancer by end of this year uh so a couple of years back we also started our journey into the tertiary data center that is the vmc at aws so as of now we have close to 25 applications uh, which we use uh, for both purposes that is one for dr and other for you can say as a tertiary data center and uh, one more prerequisite that we have to put our applications into vmc or public cloud is that we should uh, do a nsx micro segmentation and on that side we have almost like 78 applications which are uh, micro segmented to controlled or uh, to monitor the uh, east west traffic right which is very essential when we when we put our applications onto the public cloud so we can let's move to the next slide yeah so uh, subsequent slides i think arjun will take it forward arjun sure so why is modernizing apps so important and uh, why did we really reach a point uh, uh, in vmware it where uh, we had to go to this journey uh, a few years ago uh, vmware it did have uh, a fairly large portfolio of legacy applications and uh, legacy has consequences um it requires the expertise and skills uh, to run those specific legacy applications while the newer breed of uh, engineers uh, prefer to work uh, on the more modern technology stacks uh, time to market becomes a real challenge uh, whenever we talk about uh, legacy applications because of the way that they are architected uh, the complex code bases uh, cumbersome processes that would have to be implemented and uh, it makes it much harder for new features uh, to be delivered in our uh, ecosystem where applications need to integrate closely uh, with each other uh, whether with on prem or third party saas services it becomes harder doing that with legacy applications which not always come uh, with a services layer 
uh, all those years of uh, uh, monolithic applications, of course, uh, leads to uh, technical debt. And uh, that accumulated debt uh, results in uh, uh, unexpected failures uh, that could happen um, sometimes in a production environment. Uh, it also uh, absolutely implies a high touch application support, uh, which is moving away from what we want to achieve um, at Enterprise IT. And the other part uh, that drives um, forward in our approach for modernizing applications is legacy applications traditionally have a subpar user experience. While we want it to be immersive for our customers, our partners, and our colleagues, uh, it became an overall imperative to move towards modernizing our application landscape. So uh, how do you go about it? How do you even decide uh, what to monitor, to modernize? And uh, what we did was uh, looked at the various mechanisms that are available for modernizing applications all the way from retiring, uh, rehosting, and retaining. Uh, and we focused on three of the mechanisms. Uh, repackaging applications to move them into containers, uh, refactoring some of the critical applications so that they are decoupled from the uh, legacy interfaces. And in certain cases, in the, the newer platforms, to completely reimagine re re how applications are built and deployed. We used a, a, a decision engine for this. Uh, it is a set of uh, rules based on the business value of the application, the criticality, the revenue impact, as well as the maturity and the resiliency requirements uh, that that particular application had. Now, all of this starts, I mean, is geared towards two major goals. Faster to production for any features that we bring to market while maintaining a really high code quality in whatever we are doing. And, uh, the two major tenants are to make this uh, uh, available or make this a reality is a smaller purpose-built applications. And those are coupled with smaller domain-focused teams, which drive the faster to production and a high code quality across uh, the application landscape. The foundation uh, for all modernization approaches as we see it is starting uh, with the architecture and this starts with a domain-driven design. Now, what does that mean? Uh, making sure uh, when we are evaluating our existing applications, we understand uh, the domains and the subdomains that exist, making sure that we create bounded contexts, which are mechanisms through which the different domains speak to each other, and ensuring that all design approaches are aligned to this. Uh, if you take an example, uh, of uh, one of uh, VMware's application that was a commingling of uh, licensing and entitlements and access control and orders and products all together, uh, making it really difficult to move forward with changes in any of these domain areas. And what we ended up doing was uh, creating uh, the anti-corruption layers between these different domains and segregating them out as independent services so that we can easily move away from what is called the legacy ball of mud uh, into applications that are scalable, flexible, decoupled, and that's where the focus development teams can put their attention on. Here's an example of uh, how we could uh, go about breaking the monolith in a structured way. Um, assume it's a standard monolithic layered application with UI application logic, uh, data access, and a database. Uh, this could be an e-commerce application. The starting point is figuring out what the domains and the bounded context of this application are. Uh, for an e-commerce application, the standard domains that can be there are the orders, the products, the payments, and the users. Okay. Now, we start off by making sure that every single new feature that is built is not built into the monolithic application but is exposed as a standalone service. And that service attaches back uh, to uh, the monolithic application via a layer of glue code or what we call the anti-corruption layer. Now you can imagine as we move forward with this, uh, increasing the newer features as well as modifications to existing features will get moved out of the monolith 
uh, into newer and newer microservices that we create. Uh, you segregate out the presentation layers, making sure that all the traffic to the backend is through an API gateway. Take it even further uh, so that uh, not just the newer services, but all calls uh, to the backend of the application is uh, through a specified API gateway, and you increasingly started uh, the decomposition of the monolith. In its final state, uh, it would look something like this. Uh, that uh, you have a decoupled set of microservices uh, for each of the bounded context. They have their you know, data sources uh, and you are able to decouple and flexibly move around among any of them. Mukund, okay, back to you. Good, very good. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Arjun. It was uh, really insightful as how we have uh, embark our journey right and we have uh, you can say uh, broken down our monolithic applications and uh, move on to the microservices so uh, coming back to this slide right so this uh, slide depicts the cdto modern application platform right uh, this is like current state of uh, the platform that we are offering to vmware it developers uh, but yeah so uh, coming to this stage was uh, not so easy, right? Uh, it is like a, a long process, long journey that we have also undergone. Like Arjun has been also, uh, you can say, uh, making sure that he breaks his monolithic applications into microservices. This platform also has evolved over the period of time, right? So uh, earlier we used to have a couple of uh, uh platforms that uh, were like only the docker right i mean uh, like 2016 we have started with uh, something like dockers uh, and then uh, uh, we had our own platform called uh, the pcf that is currently renamed as the tenzo application service which was uh, uh, quite famous into uh, the developer community right we have uh, you can say uh further uh stabilize it made it available across two data centers and then when the kubernetes came we also started looking at uh, how do we uh, make sure that we take advantage of kubernetes platform and we implemented uh, on the epks earlier right now it is called tanzu application grid uh, tanzu kubernetes grid so this is part of our the run uh, platforms wherein all the applications are getting developed so uh, coming back to the build side, right? So build side, we have, uh, of course, our Spring Cloud services, uh, which are heavily used by our developers. Then from the, I can say the DevOps side, we have the vRelays code stream, which is used for deployment of pipeline. And uh, then uh, Tanzu application catalog is also heavily used for the microservices because <laughs> from here we get the hardened image, right? So uh, as all of you know, right, getting, any Docker image from marketplace or uh, uh, internet is very risky, right? We cannot trust. We have to make sure that it is uh, coming and uh, coming from a proper channel and hardened, right? At OS level, at software level. So we have this Bitnami, right? Uh, Bitnami catalog was uh, uh, used by open source community that has uh, evolved further. And uh, we have this Tanzu application catalog, which is uh, enterprise grade, uh, you can say open source images, uh, hardened images, which are delivered for any uh, enterprise, right? So that is implemented on top of our Harbor, uh, which is uh, also again, uh, used by internally by R&D developers, as well as uh, the IT developers. So this consists of, uh, this is the major building blocks of the build, uh, 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 the build of application. When it comes to managing the applications, we have uh, majorly three things. That is one, the, one, of, one of them is the Tanzu mission control, wherein we, we have implemented Tanzu mission control uh, to make sure that we have a holistic view of uh, our Tanzu uh, grid control on-prem as well as cloud. Right, and we can create uh, clusters using uh, Tanzu Mission Control. And from the logging uh, perspective or uh, the monitoring perspective, we have here realized login site and uh, Wavefront, which is implemented as part of the managed block. Right, so this is the complete uh, modern application platform, which is uh, used by the CDTO development team. Uh, right, Arjun's team. Right, uh, basically, and on top of that, we have various. Uh, uh, applications which we have built right from scratch or uh, those we have also uh, broken down from monolithic to microservices the 
the best example is this customer connect right earlier this application used to be uh, monolithic and uh, we have broken down into microservices this is now uh, using this uh, uh, the cdto map platform then the next application that i want to talk is the ticketing application which is uh, something similar to service now uh, which is uh, called as help now in our vmware it or vmware uh, uh, ecosystem which is used by all the stakeholders uh, across vmware uh, it is internal application but yeah it is heavily utilized and again this is uh, sitting on top of our cdto map platform uh, third application i want to uh, highlight is vmworld application right so vmworld application is a uh, little difficult uh, sorry little different uh, wherein the, the application is the primary application is sitting on vmc database uh, and the secondary or uh, the dr site is in on in our data center right so again, this application is uh, also utilizing our CDTO map uh, platform. And likewise, we have so many other applications uh, that our uh, IT and CDTO teams have developed over the period of time. And uh, uh, these are perfectly working fine as of now. So this picture is uh, as of now uh, the platform that we are uh, operating, but in future we may add a few more things which might come as part of VMware roadmap, right? Like. Uh, uh, Tanzu service mesh or uh, Tanzu build service, or you can say even Tanzu data service, those kind of things, POCs we are doing as of now. But uh, yeah, so this is current status. So uh, till now we have looked at how we have evolved uh, and uh, you can say use the latest and greatest technologies, uh, but uh, this is one part of story. Right? So we need to also make sure that we are taking care of uh, the people aspect of it, right? Uh, we need to make sure that uh, the people who have been developing our applications in the past are also cross-trained, right? And they are also, uh, you can say, uh, getting utilized for the newer uh, or modern applications, right? So it is a little difficult, uh, a little challenging also, right? Uh, uh, not many times or not always, right? Uh, you have the legacy developers or legacy administrators can cope up with the new latest and late latest technology. Uh, we have seen little challenges over here. Uh, I think Arjun also can speak about some of the challenges that he has faced uh, in the sure. development side. Yeah. Sure, Mukund. I mean, uh, uh, it is a new paradigm. Uh, uh, engineers everywhere, uh, uh, as well as uh, including DevOps engineers, SRA engineers, application developers, all of them really need to have a mindset change. Um, some of it can be trained. Uh, for others, uh, it may be a hard choice on whether somebody is, uh, stays with legacy uh, or makes a transition uh, into modern applications. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have seen almost like uh, yeah, 50%, 40% people will be in a position to grasp the new things and get on to the new modern applications. Uh, this is uh, one thing. Second thing also I want to emphasize is that uh, not only that you need to always cross train your existing team, you may also have to bring in, uh, you can say uh, uh, engineers from market uh, so that uh, you can have a both mix of uh, your in-house uh, engineers and uh, engineers who have come from outside, okay? So uh, this is uh, the second part that is about the, you can say people, we have, we have uh, discussed a lot of about uh, technology, people, and then the third and important part is uh, the process, right? So unless and until you have uh, agile process or the process which is supporting the modern applications, right? Uh, it is of no use that even if you, uh, you can say create a platform which are ready to be consumed by developers for modern applications, you have engineers who can develop the code in modern applications unless and until you have the, uh, the right uh, process, which is again agile, uh, make sure that uh, we'll not be able to utilize the fullest uh, benefit of uh, technology and people, right? So we have to also make sure that uh, we adapt to the new processes, uh, which will be aligned to the DevOps, DevSecOps, and we have to also look at, make sure that everything that we are delivering is a code, right? We can go to the next slide, Arjun. Yeah, maybe I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, right? So we have to make sure that all the uh, manual things that we are doing as part of your CDCI or release, right? We have to automate it uh, and make sure that it is seamless, one touch uh, deployment from start to end, right? So Arjun, you want to also- sure. so uh, as we 
as we move forward uh, uh, with a quick uh, uh, deployments to production, uh, shortening the last mile, so to speak, it is also important that we look at uh, the tool sets uh, that ensure the security uh, of the platform, as well as the software that is uh, increasingly available on public cloud. Uh, what you'll notice in the tool chain over here is uh, we do a lot of automation pieces, uh, getting images from uh, in catalog, et cetera. Uh, what we also make sure is uh, security, whether it is uh, threat modeling uh, upfront uh, or coast composition analysis uh, or penetration testing, it is built in uh, as an integral part of the overall uh, tool chain. Okay, good. Thank you, Arjun. Okay, and uh, what has that led uh, to? Uh, the older style of uh, application development uh, where we always ran into the last mile challenge uh, between the time that the code is checked in to the time it becomes uh, usable by customers uh, on production uh, and the challenges around that has now transformed to have uh, self-contained teams uh, which is comprised of uh, engineers, designers, uh, QE together, uh, automation at every point of the life cycle so that uh, changes uh, or features can be deployed to production when ready. Uh, the change is self-evident. A uh, uh, huge reduction in the delivery cost per feature, uh, moving from monthly or quarterly releases to uh, delivering when ready. Uh, and uh, even in a situation like the pandemic year of uh, 2020, uh, 8,000 plus features are released uh, during the year. Uh, we are going to top that very easily uh, in the years ahead. Okay, thank you. That was uh, amazing achievement, Arjun. It, it is uh, good to see all those numbers. Okay, so uh, team, uh, this we have almost come to the end of this uh, presentation and uh, it, uh, you can always uh, touch, uh, you can keep in touch with us on various, uh, uh, you can say social medias. We have uh, the VMware on VMware uh, Twitter handle. We have blogs on VMware, uh, right? Uh, the, uh, the session that you have seen, similar uh, learnings we post on to our VMware blogs. We also have dedicated a space into vmware.com and always you can reach out to uh, vmware on vmware at vmware.com for any other uh, case studies that you want to know more about. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, with that, we conclude uh, our session on uh, VMware IT's uh, app modernization journey. Uh, thank you everyone for participating. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.